Hello and welcome everyone to Balthazar's NFT Gaming Podcast. We have now arrived at episode 10. Woohoo! In this interview, we're going to take a deep dive with the COO of Dexio Protocol, which is creating their flagship game, Dexy Hunter. The game is going to be an augmented reality and reward players with crypto and NFTs for visiting areas in their local communities. So if you enjoyed Pokemon Go and are looking for more experiences in AR with NFTs included, then stay tuned for this interview with Dexy Hunter. Welcome everyone to the Balthazar NFT Gaming Podcast. Today we have Greg Gould from Dexio Protocol and Dexy Hunter. Typically we do these podcasts after a research report where we can do some follow-up questions, but Greg, you actually, your team reached out to me. So this is a great opportunity just to hear about a new game and I would love to learn some things as well. So let's just start off. Tell us a little bit about who you are, what's your role within the team and tell us a little bit about your game. Yeah, so like you said, my name is Greg Gould. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Dexio Protocol. I'm also the co-owner of Dexio Protocol Incorporated, which is a registered corporation here in the United States. So, um, And my business partner and the Chief Executive Officer is a guy named Don Rika, who did, he's the founder, and he started the project about a month before I joined the team. So um, he started the project in in the Dexio Protocol in May of 2021, and I joined in, in uh, early June. So, um, and we kind of hit it off and then became partners, and we've been on this journey together ever since. So, um, Dexio Protocol is a, we are a, a gaming company that uses blockchain and uh, crypto to enhance users' experiences and to bridge the gap between traditional enterprise and the Web3 revolution. What does that mean? That means that we think of ourselves and we identify as a gaming company that is utilizing all of the wonderful things that blockchain and crypto can bring to gaming and do bring to gaming uh, to enhance our users' experiences. Because as you know, and as anybody listening to this podcast will know, you don't make a game better by sticking crypto in it. Like that, that doesn't improve the game in any way. Um, games have to be fun and they have to be um, you know, immersive to some degree and we have to have emotional connection to them in order for them to be successful, right? Um, and uh, so we're a gaming company first. That's that's all we always think of ourselves. We are also a crypto company too, but we do a lot of things, uh, you know, to uh, it, it make sure that we're we're focused on gaming and even the other products in our ecosystem, which we can talk a little bit about later, um, like our NFT marketplace, which we call an Emporium, um, and our wallet and our swap. They're all kind of focused around. We're not really a wallet comp. You know, we're not a wallet project. We're not a swap project. Uh, we do have a very you know wonderful marketplace for our gaming assets and also for our our NFT creators too, but um, you know those things are there to support the games, right? That's what we are. So um, and uh, you know the the we were talking about a little bit about this earlier. We we're, we are very focused and guided by the mission of adoption, utility, and sustainability. Adoption of crypto and blockchain technologies, uh, utility of blockchain and, and crypto technologies, but the token itself and also the NFTs or any NFTs that we're using inside of our gaming ecosystem. And we can talk a little bit about the really cool system that we've built that allows us to read the contract from really any NFT contract we want to and implement that in our games, use upgradable uh, NFTs through tracking metadata on the back end of our servers against the NFT contract address and unique ID. So we have some really cool systems in place that allow us to to create a lot of utility, not just for our token and our NFTs, but other tokens and other, other NFTs. And then of course, we're guided by the mission of sustainability, which again, you and I were speaking very briefly about at the beginning, but um, I think everybody knows that at this point, you know, all of not just NFT gaming, but all of the entire NFT space and the whole crypto space, we all need to really shift focus. And we've all, you know, always been kind of focused on that, but the whole space needs to shift focus and look at how do we, you know, create sustainable, business mechanics that actually um, you know, have real revenue streams, crypto and fiat revenue streams that can support the business, support the development of the blockchain and crypto technology, and you know, obviously have potentially profits for investors, right? Um, and how do we do that in a way that, that makes sense and isn't, you know, for lack of a better term, a Ponzi scheme, right? Because the vast majority of stuff really has been a Ponzi scheme and maybe not maliciously or intentionally or, or you know, with purpose, right? But if you create a system in which it requires the, uh, you know, people who are going to make money from it to uh, cash out and use the people who are coming in later as exit liquidity, 
that's a Ponzi scheme, you know? So whether you want it to be or not, that's what has happened a lot. So we're really focused on those three things. That's who we are. That's what we're doing. We can talk a little bit about the games too. Yeah. I mean, I would, I'd love to, I, I love the fact that you guys have that value of, Hey, we're a gaming company first, the crypto blockchain, all that's meant to enhance it and hopefully be sustainable. So I want to get more into that, but first, uh, maybe just whet our appetite a little bit first, just with the game, you know, what, you know, a lot of people, as you said, are here for the game itself. So what is it going to be like? What type of audience do you expect? And you know, who's going to want to play this game? Okay, so the our flagship. So we actually we have um, we have six games in our suite of games, but four of them are um, either out, are uh, like right on the verge of coming out, or going into their public beta phase. Okay, so we have quite a bit of stuff, but we'll focus on our flagship um, application, which we call Dexy Hunter. This is an augmented reality application, which, for lack of a better description, brother, I hate this description, but it helps people understand uh, the the basic tenets of the game, right? It's like Pokemon Go for crypto. That's how people want to refer to it because it uses augmented reality technology. It uses geolocation and you're collecting things, sure. right? Do you, do you not like Pokemon Go? It's not that I don't like Pokemon Go. I mean, I don't love Pokemon Go, but it's not that I don't love it. It's just that the Dexy Hunter experience is so much more than Pokemon Go ever could be. because We're taking so many different things from so many different genres of gaming and so many different genres of business mechanics um, that, you know, it, it's it's an entirely different so i think it sells it short but it is a way you know one of the ways that we learn right one of the great ways that we learn is through gaming but one of the great ways we also learn is through association so people know pokemon go it's easy to make that association they understand the basic tenets of it so but we are um not dropping pokemon <laughs> um uh but um instead we have different assets that we're able to drop inside of of the the augmented reality experience so crypto nfts um, non-blockchain gaming assets. Um, we have a uh, uh, an integrated login system we call Dexy Connect that, that allows people to create a single login that gets them into all of our different games and they can share assets across those games. So it's a really nice system that enables, it, it's, the, the purpose of it is about user retention, right? You can collect assets or earn assets in one game and use them in another one. We want to give people options and variety, right? So um, so they can collect, again, crypto, NFTs, non-blockchain assets, uh, our, our non-blockchain in-game currency we call Dexy Cash. Um, and uh, then people can also collect, and this is, this is really important um, to the business model of it, we're partnering with businesses and we're dropping um, business vouchers, QR codes, if you want to call them that, business vouchers that people can collect and then redeem at different businesses, whether in person or online, right? And what that, that, that's the business mechanic. There's the sustainability, right? If you get users, you got the eyeballs, right? And people are running around, they're collecting their crypto and they're super excited about earning crypto and, and building out their digital portfolio and collecting NFTs and, and getting really excited, getting on a marketplace and finding out that there's all these creators and these game assets and all this stuff. If you got the eyeballs and you got people excited about it, right? Uh, businesses will pay for that. <laughs> They'll pay for those eyeballs, right? And so there's, there you have that business mechanic. So that's what the Dexy Hunter experience is. We are adding all kinds of gamification into it. So there's, you know, different things that you have to do when you collect the assets um, from, you know, simple things like spinning a wheel to answering a question maybe about the project that you're collecting the crypto from. Um, you know, or maybe following the YouTube of the podcast channel that you, um, you're, you know, you're collecting some, some voucher for or whatever, um, you know, so we can make them do all kinds of different things, but we're also gamifying in other ways by integrating our other games into it. So we're going to, people are, can have augmented reality dragon fights, um, you know, kind of like the Pokemon go thing. Um, and also we, uh, are putting NPC characters from one of our other games inside of the, uh, Dexy Hunter experience and sending people on quests. And in order to unlock their quests, they have to do special, um, you know, spells, for lack of a better term, in augmented reality to unlock their quests. So really kind of cool mechanics, gamifying it, making it fun, making it a really immersive experience, uh, you know, obviously engaging people emotionally with the gamification process of it and also collecting things from their local businesses um, and making it rewarding, right? It's not, we we don't like the term play to earn at all. I think it's a terrible uh it's a terrible ethos, right? Um, and it has hurt the NFT gaming space a lot, right? Um, you know, it, people think it's helped again. It hasn't. It's hurt the space because, you know, the P2E gaming thing really is, is unfortunately, is, is a Ponzi scheme. So we don't like that term. But if you can play a game and, you know, invest your time and, and you know, your resources also into it, right? 
and be able to get something out of that that has value that you can then transfer down the line, either by you know earning crypto that you might be able to cash out for fiat or trade for other crypto that you like or use inside of a different ecosystem that you want to um, you know be able to utilize it in by an NFT from Avalanche or wherever you you know from from wherever you want to um, you know or take those assets and be able to and those investments that you've made of time and money right and be able to sell those to another gamer that's coming into the ecosystem after you who maybe doesn't want to go through all the stuff that you've gone through to create that that, that NFT with with all those attributes and those those upgraded features so it's it's a it's a definitely a the potential to to you know, take your investment of time and energy and money and be able to draw something back out of it, you know, later on. And, and, and that's not really play to earn. That's that's really play and own, right? That's really what that is. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that you're going to find, and I probably already you are finding, and, and the people you work with are finding that most of the games that are being created by people who are thinking longer ahead than, you know, just some pump and dump bull run nonsense. They're thinking about the same things that I'm talking about to you right now. I'm sure you've heard all this stuff before. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think what you're saying there is what everyone's saying is that the play to earn model isn't sustainable, which based on what I'm hearing from you and you can correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like instead of, Hey, play to earn, we're just going to print a bunch of tokens, hope that they're worth something. And then that's how you get value out of it. Instead, you're saying actually our revenue is coming from businesses that want to advertise. Maybe it's, Hey, you know, use this AR and visit your local Starbucks. They have an NFT to come pick up that gives you uh, a once a month discount or something like that. And they're also teaming up with Coinbase to give you the Kronos token if you visit. Is that kind of the idea behind it? Exactly right. So it, it really can be anything that you want it to be because we have, you know, the, the world becomes our real estate, right? That, that's what happens. In augmented reality, the entire world becomes our real estate. We can drop augmented reality objects wherever we want to in public places, and people can run around and collect them. And we can engage people in any way that we want to. And that, that can be anything. You know, it could be applied to, you know, a little like uh, segmented bounty hunt at a local museum. Or maybe a school wants to educate their kids about, you know, augmented reality or about the grounds at the school and they can send them on an augmented reality bounty hunt and they can collect different things that educate them um, or require them to do some tasks to educate themselves. There's really the the whole point and the reason why we call it the Dexy Hunter experience is because it's about an immersive experience. It's about connecting to um, and embracing and adopting new ideas and going out in the world and connecting with new businesses and new new projects, learning things, but in an immersive way where you're interacting in the real world. And obviously there's the move to earn mechanic in it too, because you have to walk around to do this. It's not like you can, you know, you're not going to do this from your house. Um, uh, you know, unless you do some kind of location spoofing, which I'm not going to tell you how we have fixed that problem, but we have. Um, so, um, I mean, you might be able to location spoof once, but you're never going to be able to do it the way that people did for Pokemon Go because we've integrated a system that prevents that. But so, you know, we're getting people out, they're active, they're engaging in their local communities. We're engaging with businesses. It's, you know, it's really an experience and it's designed to, um, take those eyeballs and the value of having those eyeballs and have that reflect back into the business so that there's value in the business and sustainability, right? That's our whole focus. Adoption, utility, sustainability, right? It covers all those, those grounds. Yeah. I love that concept. It's making a lot of sense to me. And as I'm picturing this, one of the things that I think was so successful about Pokemon Go was that this was a game that anyone can play, right? Anyone can pick up their phone, walk around and, and grab a Pokemon. It doesn't take huge mechanical skill and you can just do it as you go throughout your day. So I, I'm curious, I think that's the awesome part about this Dexy Hunter idea is that anyone can play this game. I think the hard part is how do you translate that into them actually being into Web3? I'm thinking about those people that maybe can play an AR game, but have never touched crypto, never have touched NFTs. So how do you convert them into the Web3 world uh, using this game? So um, I, I kind of joke like, and it, it is, it's, it's a joke, but it's funny. And then it's also kind of true that we're almost kind of like Web3 drug, right? So it's like, we're like, hey man, here's a taste, you know? Um, so the idea is that, Anybody can register an account for Dexy Hunter. Anybody can register uh, our, our integrated login system, Dexy Connect. Anybody can create an account 
and they can you know create a profile of XC Hunter and they can walk around and collect things. And any of those non-blockchain assets that they're collecting, that non-blockchain in-game currency, Dexy Cash, those business vouchers, the non-blockchain game assets that we're dropping in there, any of those things um, can uh, you know, be collected and added to a person's profile. They don't need to do anything with blockchain. It makes the game fun, but it also makes it very disarming to people who, as we talked about before, may be, you know, skeptical or outright hostile towards NFT gaming, right? You're going to get your gamers playing it because they don't have to have a wallet. They can still have fun and they can still collect things. They can still be really cool and it can still have value to them, right? Um but if they collect an NFT or a crypto asset, if they collect anything that's on the blockchain, okay, they're collecting an augmented reality object, and that's just like a placeholder in their profile, right? It's not like they actually, you know, the the the, the Kronos coin is not floating around, you know, out in in you know, that's not what's happening. So um, it's a placeholder. It's a stored as data, and they have to request that from us for us to send that to them. And I'm not going to get into the whole mechanics of the request to redeem blockchain assets, but there is a process. And so it prompts them if they don't already have a wallet and, and we haven't already identified the public addresses on those different chains that we're dropping crypto for, for them, it prompts them to create a wallet, which is done internally through our application and they create what we call a hunter wallet or a Dexy wallet. Okay. And that automatically populates the 13 chains that we have in the, um, uh, in the application and, um, stores those public addresses against their their profile right we're not storing their private keys we're not storing their seed phrases all that stuff is all stored locally on their device like we we're you know we're not not your keys not your crypto we're not doing anything like that but we are storing the public addresses that are generated against us so that we're able to send them these blockchain assets but they also have now generated a wallet we've walked them through they've gotten their seed phrase we told them to you know don't even give it to your mom all that stuff right um, and now they have a wallet okay and and so they've collected these crypto assets and they're collecting non-blockchain assets and, and they go, okay, well, I want this thing now that I collected it. And then we're going to walk them through creating a wallet, figuring out how to do all those things and educate them about that process. That's the adoption part, right? That's the, that's the, Hey, here's a taste. Let them collect the thing. Let them be excited about collecting it. Go through the whole experience of collecting an NFT and the whole experience of collecting crypto. There's rockets taking off and you're doing all kinds of stuff, right? And it's really exciting. And then, okay, well, now I have this thing in, as a, I identified in my, in my inventory, in my, in my app, but how do I get at it? Well, I, I'm, I'm going to have to create this wallet and, and we walk them through the whole process. That's how we're, that's how we're facilitating adoption, right? Um, because we, we know that people um instinctively are going to even if they're uh skeptical or outright hostile towards crypto they're gonna be like well i mean i collected this thing you know <laughs> i'm gonna get it you know and so we'll get them you know to, to play through that now we also have mechanics built into um all of this the nft mechanics of the the, the permissioned function of nfts right so what one of the great use cases for nfts is that um, that is already happening, right? Like there's municipalities using them for parking spots. There's uh, music venues using them for tickets, right? There's there's a there's a degree. There's that unique identification that is not you know re-replicable. You can't you, you can't recreate that. It's immutable. And so that unique identif that ID allows for whatever system it's connecting to to allow for certain permissions, right? And so we have NFT technology built into this that we call Dexy badges. And then in the other games, we call them battle passes and all kinds of stuff um, where owning that NFT gives you special access to things too, right? So it gives you special access to, to something we call Dexy zones. It gives you special access to certain um, uh, bounties and, and certain areas. So that part of it too, they're going to want to have these NFTs so that they can have the full immersive experience, right? And we're going to make that clear to them. Like, you know, yeah, you could do this if you had this NFT, right? Um, and then by having that NFT, they're going to recognize that their NFT is being checked against, you know, their profile, and then they're being given this permission on that basis. Because that, again, that's probably the most significant, at least current use case for NFTs, right? Um, is that it, it, it um, you know, it creates an immutable, unique identifier that can give you permission to do different things. I'm sure you've, you've um, you know, heard about the, soulbound nfts too right so that's a whole phenomenon also right um and we're not doing soulbound nfts but it's the same sort of thing right you have this unique identifier that's tied to you indefinitely right so um you know really cool stuff
Yeah, I think that's a really smart progression, right? And I like how you're saying we give them a little taste and then it's a stair step and another stair step and it kind of integrates them more and more and more. And I think that's what a lot of games haven't done a good job on because it's so hard to get into crypto and NFTs and they make so many barriers if you don't give them those small little steps because it truly is confusing. So I love what you guys are doing there. Uh, I want to hear next though, you guys have launched the beta in, I think you said five cities on your website is what I saw. So what has the experience reaction been so far? And then moving forward, how do you set up into other cities uh, to expand? So we did the five city beta in part because we had kind of boots on the ground in those particular cities. So we have a very big Filipino community. It's big, big gaming, you know, game five communities there. Um, and, and we have a big Turkish community. So we did Istanbul. My business partner lives in Amsterdam. So we did Amsterdam. I live in Columbus. We did Columbus. And then we have a bunch of, of people on our team and then also community members in the London area. Plus London's kind of a cool place to have done that anyway. So we picked those five cities for those reasons. And actually there was only supposed to be like two or 300 people at the most on the beta. So for iOS, we, we did not use a public beta key. We were, because we didn't want to like have all these people downloaded and it go crazy. So we handed out the um, permission for iOS test flight, which I'm, you're probably familiar with, right? Um, you know, through emails, right? So we actually had to like give people permission. And so, but we had to hand out the APK file for the Android users, and then they gave it to everyone. And we had like, I don't know, 2000 downloads before we put a stop to their ability to, um, you know, interact with the app. We did a, you know, an update that just kind of stopped. They, they could download it, but it wasn't gonna do anything, right? Um, and we were just like, whoa, what is going on? Like all these accounts started getting created. And I'm looking at the admin panel and I'm like calling Don. I'm like, Don, why is there 700 accounts? You know, and then I look like two hours later. I'm like, why are there 1100 accounts? Like when well, something's wrong, you know, so, you know, we I, we stopped it. But so it was like mad wildfire. Um, but the people that were supposed to be in the beta who were, you know, in beta groups that were giving us feedback had a really good experience. But one of the things that happens when you're developing any product and, um, you know, I think you could probably, you, you know, again, this is something you can relate to and I'm sure your listeners can, you know, you become, there's certain things that like become intuitive about the, the application because you built it and because you've had every experience of it kind of moving along, but then you give it to somebody else who's completely green and they're like, how does, what, what am I supposed to do? So there was a lot of things like that where, where people were like, this is, doesn't really make sense, you know, and then we would tell them what to do. Oh, okay. I understand. But like, it wasn't like it was totally intuitive and, and we didn't want to like do like a whole, um, you know, prompting instructional thing, you know, because that can be kind of cumbersome also. So we wanted to make sure it was intuitive. So we took a lot of feedback about how to make it more intuitive. And then some of the processes themselves were kind of cumbersome in, in the way that people were requesting the blockchain assets from us and all those things. So, and then the UI, we were like, okay, we want to kind of upgrade this thing. And we took some of the animations and we wanted to make them better and the immersive experience stuff and the gamification. So you know, we did that 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 um, five city beta back in May and June, and then we've spent the last two and a half months just like hammering away at at you know kind of recreating some of the the especially UX stuff and and some of the UI stuff, and then all the animations to make them better. And and the 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 thing that's great about this product for us is that um, you know there's relatively low costs for us to put bounties all over the world. Okay. It doesn't really cost us anything to put our non-blockchain in-game currency around. We're just generating that, right? It doesn't cost us anything to put non-blockchain game assets. Um, and, you know, we I, I went through our marketplace before we're getting ready to migrate. Um, and we're migrating to Polygon, not to Kronos. Um, but uh, we are migrating to Kronos also. But first, we're going to do Polygon, and then we're going to uh, to bridge to Kronos. But... Um, I, I had our NFT uh, marketplace manager go through and buy several thousand NFTs um, from our marketplace uh, and and then uh, had a bunch of the gaming assets uh, purchased also and had you know ones that hadn't been sold from the project sent to me. And so we have literally thousands of NFTs that we're going to just you know be able to put out and give out to people. Um, maybe more than like, I think it's might be four or 5,000 NFTs. Okay. So, um, you know, it's a lot. And then, you know, we obviously have, um, you know, some, some liquidity on the crypto side of things to be able to give that away. But the thing is, is that, um, it doesn't cost us really anything to put the bounties all over the place. And it doesn't really cost us anything for people to collect them. It only costs us when people redeem them. And there's a whole process of redemption that, you know, uh, has a cost to it. So we're able to generate revenue on the backside of that too. Um, and, 
Um, so it's very sustainable and scalable from that perspective. Our admin panel allows us to drop bounties in all kinds of different ways. We do have to manually do it. We don't just auto-generate bounties like they do with, with we can do that, auto-spawning. We're, we're able to do that. We just don't want to. So we pick targeted areas. We're able to drop certain bounties, so many bounties, you know, based on different kilometer radial perspectives. And, and we can just do it all over the place, all that we want. Um, and uh, we're trying to utilize a technology that is not really working right yet, um, to be totally honest, to stop bounties from being dropped in, in certain types of places, like in private areas or like in lakes, you know, like we don't want, you know, we don't want um, the bounties to be dropped somewhere where it could be dangerous for somebody to try to go get it, right? Um, so um, so that it's not really quite working right. So we're, we're trying to make sure that that works right. Otherwise, we're going to have to like manually go in and try to like clean things up, which is you know certainly not going to be a task that I want to do. But so that's how we scale it up. You know, it's it doesn't it's not it's not like it's a incredibly expensive endeavor to put everything out there, right? And then the more users that we have, obviously the you know the the more revenue is coming in, and you know we can facilitate all of those earning mechanics uh, of the game. Yeah, and, and talking about scaling up, how do you move into other cities? And if your eventual goal is to make partnerships with businesses or a uh, local art museum in Portland, do you have to go one by one city through city to set all these things up? Is there gonna be a process later on to automate some of that stuff? Uh, how is the team thinking about that? Well, so what we've come up with is something that we call Dexy Zones. And what Dexy Zones are is essentially a business franchise that an individual can own in any particular city. It's a geofenced, immutable uh, area that um, is designated by uh, the DAO that we're setting up, which we call the Dexy DAO. Um, and uh, Dexy Zone owners will get a portion of the activity in their particular zone sent back to them, right? And they'll be uh, rewarded through reward pools in our native token but then also in the activities that are actually happening in their Dexy zone. So this is a business model that's not revolutionary, but is I, certainly the application of it in, in the crypto space is new. And um, the whole idea is we can, if again, eyeballs, right? That's what, that's what businesses and, and, and you know, advertisers uh, are selling, right? Uh, and, that, and that's what people who are buying advertising space want. They want eyeballs, right? They want especially... Um, you know, eyeballs that are, are uh, not distracted, right? Um, and so, the, you know, they're focused. So um, we, we can create all kinds of, you know, international and national business partnerships and facilitate those things with the business voucher system throughout the entire world, right? But those local businesses, those local businesses are going to want to have relationships with a local partner, and that local partner is going to be that Dexy Zone owner. So we're going to create an opportunity for people to own their own business, utilizing the incredible technology behind Dexy Hunter, um, and facilitate business relationships on a local or even regional level um, that they benefit from, right? And then the whole system benefits from. So that's the that's the business concept, right? It's not us going out and and you know getting you know a mom and pop coffee shop to sign up for it. It's somebody local like you going to your favorite coffee shop and saying, Hey, you know, do you guys want to drop, you know, a thousand vouchers in this augmented reality application? We have a couple thousand users here in Portland and it could be really cool. And the cost to you is very, very low. You know, I'm a business owner here in Ohio. I own a music uh, lesson company among some other things. But um, if somebody came to me with this application and said, Hey, we could drop vouchers for your music lesson business on the other side of town where I don't have a very good presence, um, you know, and it's only going to cost me 500 bucks or something. And, you know, I'm probably going to get, you know, some, some attention and, and be viewed as an innovator, I would definitely do that. You know, obviously my business is going to be in, in a Columbus, but, um, uh, but, you know, so it's a pretty low cost with pretty high visibility and an opportunity for a business to do something kind of innovative and new and to, to uh, connect with a customer base that maybe they wouldn't have been able to connect with before or, you know, enhance the experience of their existing customers, right? You know, connect with their existing customers in a new way. Um, you know, that, that's a big deal, right? Um, and all of these big companies like Coca-Cola and Starbucks and Chipotle, they all have marketing budgets for like innovative stuff, right? They all have like a little, you know, side budget where they're like, we'll try anything once, you know? And if they think it's cool, you know, they'll throw some money at it and, and, and um, you know, participate in it on an international and national level, right? I don't think that part of it is going to be very difficult uh, once we have the eyeballs. 
we need the eyeballs, right? That's the part that we need. Makes sense. I like that you guys are utilizing the community and being able to reward them in this blockchain space is pretty cool as well. I mean, I think that's one of the strengths of crypto and NFTs. Some some communities are just super engaged. They're very involved and they want to help out the project that they deeply care about in any way they can. So I could definitely see people in their local communities reaching out, doing those types of things, setting up with businesses, as you're saying. I think that's a really cool way to scale it up and, and hopefully allows me to play the game a little bit sooner because as you're talking about i'm like i'm excited this is awesome <laughs> so oh, in Portland. yeah yeah yep. okay, perfect yeah. sounds yeah. good well as we wrap up today we have a few more minutes but i just want to maybe step uh a little bit further out from dexy hunter i know as we talked about earlier you got a lot of other products going on you have other games any highlights any things you want to mention and it's probably too much to talk about everything but uh, any top tool or other other game you want to mention uh, during our time here? Uh, uh, right now, you can download our our hack and slash dungeon crawl sword fighting game we call Dexy Knights. It's for desktop and it's very fun. It's it's a you know it's got the low poly kind of feel to it. It's a very fun game. You can download that now. You can play it. It has all kinds of cool stuff. The thing, game that I think we're all most excited about besides Dexy Hunter right now is our game that we call Dexy Dragons. They're little cute dragons. You can, um, you know, uh, raise them, hatch them from eggs. You have a little home area that you can do all kinds of crazy stuff with. Um, and you form your little team of dragons and you have little dragon fights. Um, and, and it's, I am not like a, somebody who plays like little games like that. I don't tend to play games like I love this game. I'm super addicted to it. It's like, actually, it's uh, obstructive to my work sometimes. because I'm like, oh, yeah. Um, but uh um, and I'm thinking to myself, like, it's okay that I'm playing this game because I'm the project manager, you know, it's, it's, it's like, oh, it's <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> so um, uh, my girlfriend totally called me out for it. She's like, that's not work, man. You're not working. You know, like, oh. I have that same problem. It's OK. <laughs> I, I, I fully understand you. <laughs> like, I was like, all right, that's, that's a, you know, I'm still in the leveling grounds, like screwing around. She's like you, it's not helping anything. So um, but uh, we're really excited about that game. And actually. Uh, we thought that our, our roadmap was going to, this is one of the rare instances where, you know, we thought our roadmap was going to be a, a lot longer. And then my my chief game developer, a guy named Ovi Sanz, is a brilliant dude who lives in uh, out in California and uh, manages our whole game dev team. But he was like, man, I, I think we, you know, we've got viable product here in like two or three weeks. And I'm like, wait, what? You know, so um, so that's going to roll out really quickly too. We have another game called Dexy Carnival, which is a suite of little mini games, skee-ball, claw machine, uh, um air hockey plinko so you know kind of a fun little goofy like little mini games thing that you can play so we're trying to engage different audiences in different ways and bring them into the blockchain right we're trying to engage people who would play like a little you know goofy mini game with like ski ball or whatever right we're trying to engage those people we're trying to engage people who are going to play a mobile application like what i described in dexy dragons we're trying to engage people who would play you know uh, uh who would enjoy an immersive experience like dexy hunter we're tr and, and also our desktop gamers we're trying to engage all these different you know mediums because again adoption utility sustainability we're trying to bring people in and and we're not trying to 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 pigeonhole ourselves in any particular type of person self-identified you know traditional gamers are from all walks of life and like all kinds of different games right and so we need to try to engage those people as best way that we can to bring them into blockchain and to show them that you know blockchain and crypto has kind of a bad rap for kind of a good reason, you know, um, there's been a lot of like nasty, shady stuff going on. But the reality is, is that it really can and really does uh, enhance users' experience. It really does. And you know, as we move from Web One, which was consumption, to Web Two, which was creation, to Web Three, which is ownership and control, right? You know, the the and the ownership and control part of Web Three is the crypto and blockchain stuff. And people were, uh, you know, somewhat hesitant or reluctant to um, participate in web one, you know, in the, in the consumption portion of that. Right. And there were people that were, were uh, hostile towards the web two, you know, phenomenon of, of creation and Facebook profiles and MySpace and YouTube and everything else. And there's people that are hostile towards this next evolution of the internet, which is what is happening. Right. We just need to, to disarm those people and show them that, um, you know, web three gaming is super fun. It, it is rewarding. And it does enhance the experience that you are already enjoying in your games. Again, sticking crypto into a game doesn't make it better, but adding crypto and blockchain technology in a way that enhances the user's experience does make the game better because what is gaming if it's not an experience, right? It's an experience. That's what you're, that's what you're, you're trying to have an experience with your friends or by yourself, or, you know, you're, you're trying to engage in some kind of experience that brings you um, you know, joy at some level, whatever that means to you. Right. And if you can enhance that experience, 
um, you know, especially the long-term value of that experience by being able to retain some kind of value in, in that process and, and translate that into, um, you know, a way to withdraw that value back out later if you want to. That's kind of amazing, man. And I think if we can just disarm the, the skeptics and, and the antagonists, right, if we can disarm them and get them to play the games and enjoy it and try the blockchain side of it out, we're going to win them over, right? We're going to earn their trust and we're going to win them over. But we have to do it, like you said, in stages, right? We can't, we can't just be like, try to download the wallet, get an NFT, blah! You know, they're just, it's like, that's not going to work. You know, you have to be like, play the game, it's fun, you know? You don't have to have a wallet, you know? And then you correct collected some crypto, cool. Now you, you do have to have a wallet. You don't have to, but you should, maybe you should get one because it's be bad, better, but don't if you don't want to, and whatever, you know? That's, I think that's the way that we actually win people over. Yeah, I know. I totally agree with what you're saying, Greg. I love what you are communicating here. How do we actually disarm people who are negative or hesitant about Web3? I mean, that's part of our goal here at Balthazar with gaming specifically. Sounds like you guys have lots of the same goals, visions there. So I'm excited for you and your team. Uh, lastly, just anything you want to shout out if people want to find out more or if they want to join your community, where would you point them to first? Um, I mean, so we're, we're, we're strong on telegram at Dexio chat. We have, a, you know, our discord is set up. You can find all that through our telegram at Dexio chat. Um, the best thing to do is just go to our website, DexioProtocol.com. I'm very easy to communicate with. Um, you know, maybe I'm too available. That's what people on my team tell me all the time, but all of my contact information, except for my cell phone number is all on our website. And so is my business partner and a bunch of other members of our team. If you go to our website, you'll see that we have a very big team, 45, 50 people, um, so there's a very big group of people that are working on this. We have a great community um, and, and uh, yeah, and, we, and we're, we're happy to connect with new people for sure. And we definitely are excited. September 19th, Dexy Hunter goes live globally and we're very excited about that. Obviously, you know, we're going to release it and then we're going to continue to, to upgrade different features of it and add things to it. We're not going to overwhelm people. We're going to, you know, release the game so that people can play it and enjoy it and then start to add more and more features to it. Um, and same thing with Dexy Dragon. So, so yeah, so we're, we're excited about the future and we're excited about definitely connecting with, especially gamers, right? We, we, and we, we're excited about it, it you know, um, connecting with crypto enthusiasts too, right? We, 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 you know, we have a big tent, um, you know, we're happy you can come on in, you know, uh, but we really want to connect with gamers and we want gamers honest feedback about our games because it, we are a gaming company. We want to make fun games. And if, self-identified traditional gamers don't think our games are fun, then they're not, you know, then we need to go back to the table and figure out how to make them fun. Right. That's the most important thing. Well, I appreciate it, Greg. Love what you're saying. And I wish the best of luck to you and your team. I'm sure we'll keep connecting and I'm sure our viewers will hopefully get another look at your game on our content as well later on. So appreciate the time and yeah. thanks for being on. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks so much, brother. Well, that's going to be it for today's interview. I hope you enjoyed. Let us know what you think about Dexy Hunter in the comments below. Also, if you haven't checked out Balthasar's resources on our website lately, including our research reports and launch pad, then definitely jump over there when you have some time. And if you're watching on YouTube, I'll see you at one of these next videos around me. And if you're listening to the podcast, stay tuned for the next episode. Salamat, gracias. Thank you all for tuning in.